name is Kathy, and today I'll be discussing how to use homeopathic remedies on ailments. Continuing with skin, hair, and nail ailments, continuing with the letter D and E. But before I do, I wanted to let you know that because I have a great many videos now on many different topics, that I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easy to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Please refer to my How to Use Homeopathic Remedies video before using the material in this video. I'll be discussing how to use homeopathic remedies on specific ailments, but I've broken these ailments into categories for easier reference. I'll begin with ailments of the mind and emotions, then move on to ailments of the brain and nervous system, then I'll address issues with skin, nails, hair, eyes, ears, nose, ailments of the teeth, gums, lungs, respiration, heart, blood, circulation, muscles, bones, joints, then the esophagus, stomach, duodenum, and ailments of the small and large intestines, liver, gallbladder, and pancreas, then ailments of the kidneys and bladder, then ailments specific to women, and then specific to men, then issues of the hormones and metabolism, and then I'll address the issues of homeopathic remedies on infections, infestations, and the immune system. Then issues surrounding fertility and pregnancy and surrounding childbirth and postnatal problems. Then homeopathic remedies that address special problems in infants, ailments and diseases in childhood, and special issues of adolescents, and finally special issues of the elderly. Constitutional treatment involves treating the totality of the individual person. Everyone is a unique individual with a unique physiology that responds to substances differently. In homeopathy, it is recognized that people will react strongly to certain remedies, and as a result of this, they can be loosely placed into different categories called constitutional types. Homeopaths talk of, for example, phosphoric types. These are people who react strongly to phosphorus or arsenicum album types, those who react strongly to arsenicum album. The belief is that people of one type share similarities in terms of body shape, character, and personality, and the sorts of diseases from which they suffer. As an example, nature and muir people tend to be pear-shaped and have dark complexion, be fastidious and rigid in personality, and keep themselves to themselves. They also crave salt and suffer from constipation. As another example, lycopodium types tend to be tall, gangly, and of stooped appearance, with an anxious expression and a craving for sweets, and a prop propensity to produce intestinal gas. Now, of course, constitutional types have their limitations. In reality, each person is an individual, and so there are as many constitutional types as there are human beings. And account must be taken of the sum total of the person's inherent predispositions, past illnesses, diet, general reactions to the environment, intellectual and emotional features, and general attitudes towards life. This is what is meant by constitutional treatment. I'll be making detailed videos of the various constitu constitutional types after I've completed the use of homeopathic remedies on ailments. The ideas, procedures, and suggestions in this video and all my homeopathic videos are not intended as a substitute for the medical advice of a trained health professional. Consult your physician before adopting the suggestions in this video. If you're pregnant, do not attempt to use these techniques without the approval of your physician. So let's continue with learning how homeopathic treatments can help with skin, hair, and nail ailments. Today, we'll continue with skin, hair, and nail ailments that begin with the letter D and E. In homeopathic medicine, skin conditions, which include conditions affecting your hair and nails, are viewed as manifestations of a general imbalance of your system and of poor metallic, metabolic function. Rather than treating the obvious and visible symptoms such as itchiness, blisters, scaleness, and so forth, the whole constitution is treated. Suppressing symptoms at a skin level may cause the underlying imbalance to express itself in an internal and often more important organ. Skin tone and color can tell a great deal about a person. In general, skin problems are not helped by sugar, 
refined carbohydrates, chocolate, tea, coffee, alcohol, spices, or perfumed cosmetics, or by constipation and lack of exercise, both of which would slow down the elimination of toxins. Dandruff. Dandruff is characterized by an excessive amount of flaking on the scalp, sometimes with itchiness and redness. It may be a symptom of seborrheic eczema, which is a mild form of eczema that can also affect the face and chest. More rarely, dandruff is a feature of psoriasis that can involve the knees and elbows as well, or it could be a sign of fungal infection. Hair growth is usually not affected. If possible, try the homeopathic remedies and self-help measures given below before resorting to scalp preparations containing steroids. If appropriate, use the homeopathic remedies given for seborrheic eczema and psoriasis. Specific remedies to be taken three times daily for up to two weeks. When the scalp is dry, sensitive and very hot and unbearably itchy at night, with round bare patches of scalp showing through the hair, use arsenicum 6C. When the scalp is moist, greasy, and sensitive around the hair roots, use sepia 6C. If the dandruff flaking is thick, with a lot of scratching at night, which causes the skin to burn, and the scalp is made even drier by washing the hair, use sulfur 6C. For dandruff with intense itching and a thick leathery crust with pus underneath and white scabs on top, use Mazarium 6C. For flaky scalp with hair loss, use fluoric acid 6C. If the scalp is moist, encrusted, and smelly, and the crusting is worse behind the ears, use graphites 6C. If there is a sensation like insect itching insect bites all around the hairline of the forehead that with moist, smelly spots behind the ears and the itchiness is made worse by heat, use oleander 6C. For white crusting around the hairline and the hair is lank and greasy, use natrum mur 6C. In addition to the remedies already discussed, be, take Cali Sulf three times daily for up to one month. Then take it three times daily for only five days out of seven until the scalp improves. Reduce your intake of refined carbohydrates and animal fats and take extra vitamins B, C, E, and Zinc. Dandruff that sticks to the hair and scalp can be loosened by, loosened by rinsing the scalp with sour milk or a mild solution of lemon juice, which is two tablespoons of lemon juice to one pint of boiled then cooled water. As for shampoo, use pure soap only. Apply calendula ointment to itchy areas around the hairline. If the whole scalp itches, apply cold pressed linseed oil overnight and remember to sleep on an old towel and in the morning wash it off with pure soap shampoo. If all else fails, Wash hair in shampoo that contains selenium, but follow the instructions carefully. Eczema. Eczema is a local inflammation of the skin accompanied by itching, redness, and weeping blisters that bleed if scratched. Contact eczema is caused by allergies to plants, fabrics, and metals such as poison ivy and is often associated with asthma, hay fever, or allergic rhinitis. Seborrheic eczema seems to be inherited and is not linked to any allergy. It causes flakiness and itchiness in smile lines between the nose and mouth, in the beard area, around the hairline, on the scalp, on the chest, and also in the groin or armpit areas or between or under the breasts. Detergent eczema is an occupational hazard of housewives or house husbands, catering workers, hairdressers, nurses, mechanics, anyone in fact who comes into daily contact with household deter cleaners, dish detergent, shampoos, grease removers, all of which would contain detergents. The hands become rough, red, scruffy, sore and itchy, especially on the knuckles. Pomphilic eczema 
causes itchy, weeping blisters on the palms of the hands and soles of the feet and is thought to be due to stress or poor diet. It is uncommon and usually clears up of its own accord after two or three weeks. Discoid eczema appears on the arms or legs as itchy, round, red patches that proceed to flake, blister, weep, and form crusts. The condition may last for several months, but it is rare and its cause is not known. Homeopathic treatment for eczema is constitutional, but the following remedies may be used while help is being sought or when itching is very bad. Specific remedies to be taken four times daily for up to two weeks. For eczema that mainly affects the palms and areas behind the ears with a honey-like honey discharge from the skin, use graphite's 6C. For skin that is red, dry, rough, and itchy, that is aggravated by heat and washing, especially if the person has diarrhea that gets worse early in the morning, use sulfur 6C. If ex for eczema, where the affected skin cracks easily, use petroleum 6C. For blisters that itch more at night or in damp weather, but improve with warmth, use rust tox 6C. For skin that is dry and itchy and the person is constipated, use Alumina 6C. For skin that is very sensitive and easily infected and the person feels generally chilly and worse in the cold, use Hepar Sulf 6C. For skin that is dry and burning and aggravated by cold applications, use Arsenicum 6C. For irritated skin that is dirty looking and prone to infection with a general chilliness, use so P-S-O-R-I-N-U-M, Sorinium 6C. Obviously, no known irritants should be avoided. Wear rubber gloves for gardening, housework, dishing, it's dishwashing, etc. If rubber gloves are the culprits, wear cotton gloves inside them. Always dry hands thoroughly after washing and use calendula cream as a moisturizer. If the culprit is stress, exercise, relax, or a simple form of meditation may help. You should also try rubbing evening primrose oil on unaffected areas of skin and take extra vitamins B and C and also zinc. Add sapphire, safflower oil capsules to the diet as well. Edema. Edema is the abnormal accumulation of fluids in body tissues, showing as puffiness under the skin, especially around the ankles. Edema occurs in heart, liver, and kidney diseases and in protein malnutrition. Many women, especially before their periods in hot weather and as a result of prolonged standing, develop a minor form of edema. Exact cause of this condition is not known but is probably a combination of factors such as hormonal, metabolic, and nervous conditions may be responsible. In some cases, allergies may play a role. Is a complication okay, which is a stress reaction to stinging nettles and other plants and is thought to be caused by stress. In this type of edema, swelling rapidly affects the eyes and lips and may extend to the throat and obstruct the breathing. The appropriate action for this is to call 911 and use APIS 30C every five minutes for up to 10 doses. Pulmonary edema, which is characterized by breathlessness and coughing with blood flecked sputum that dramatically worsens in the space of a few hours, is also life threatening. Again, the appropriate action is to call 911 immediately. Severe chronic edema causes swelling of the ankles, legs, abdomen, face, and hands. The person's weight fluctuates during the course of the day. There is an intense thirst and frequent urges to urinate, especially when lying down. There are also bowel and bladder upsets and headaches, visual disturbances, fainting, and the mental function may also be impaired. Orthodox treatment is to restrict carbohydrates, especially refined carbohydrates. Diuretics are also used, but can also cause dependency and further fluid retention. Homeopathic treatment is constitutional. 
While waiting for the constitutional treatments to work, choose one of the following remedies. Specific remedies to be taken three times daily for up to two weeks. For swelling of the feet and ankles with chilliness, restlessness, and a thirst for hot beverages is taken in small quantities at frequent intervals, use arsenicum 6C. For swelling that is accompanied by inflammation and stinging pains, with the discomfort made worse by heat and even light pressure, use apis 6C. For mild swelling in hot weather or hot rooms, use Natrum Muir 6C. Some self-help things you can do for yourself. Cut down on salt and try to lose weight. Take extra vitamin B6 and B complex and magnesium. If the swelling occurs mainly in hot weather, take Natrum Muir three times day a day while weather is remaining hot. I have a great many videos now on many different topics, and so I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easy to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Well, that's it for now. To keep up with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button right below this video. Take care.